Good morning, Honorable Said Barrow, and uh, you are now the leader of the opposition again. officially again. Yes. Second time in a how much one? Seven, seven months. months. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So good morning and welcome to our studio. Good morning, sir. Chief. Good morning, Choi. Good morning to Belize, everyone uh, across uh, the country. Yeah, certainly glad you you come in this morning. But you know we're you're in the, the what they call the eye of the storm situation that is occurring at this point in time. Yes. I well, heard um, about a meeting last night just now from the the caller so that called a meeting that where uh, Patrick Faber was endorsed or asked to remain as the leader of the party. You, are you aware According to a, a caller, his name is John Castro. He's calling out uh, Dan Griga, and I call okay. his name since he, he put his name out yes. there. He says that he is informing us that there was a meeting of the Executive Council for the UDP last night. Yes. And there were only three persons that actually support um, for, for a convention to occur on the 27th uh, of March. Okay, and and, and, that, and that father is going to be written today. A letter is going to be sent to him to ask him to stay on. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, John, John Castillo. John, John Castillo. Castillo. Yes, Sorry, yes, yes. not that uh, Castillo. A letter John be written Castillo. to father ask him to stay on as leader of the of the party. Uh, you know, you, uh, you know anything about that? Well, that is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that is absolutely. You're not aware of that outrageous. meeting or, or the outcome of the meeting? I know that there was a meeting, um, but again. In democracy, as opposed to a dictatorship or an authoritarian uh, regime, the person with the loudest voice is not the person that carries the way forward. So most respectfully to Mr. Castillo, that is one voice. So what he says is not the gospel. No, what, we were what, just what? checking for clarity. I, 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 yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying mm -hmm. to give you mm -hmm. clarity. Mm -hmm. So as, as, as firmly and as strongly as he speaks, mm -hmm. that is one voice. Okay. That is number one. But he didn't refer to the majority. He said the majority decided. Again, that is his version of the facts. I am okay. telling you, unless he is a member of the Central Executive Committee, mm -hmm. then he is speaking as far as hearsay is concerned. But the point I'm making about democracy is it is for the delegates to decide. The same delegates that um, decided that Saldiva would be leader, the same delegates that changed their mind and said, we're going to give Faba a chance to be leader, the same delegates that when it came time for the recall, while 53% of them said Faba should go, we, that, we did not meet the threshold. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. of the two-thirds. Now everybody will complain about the delegates list when many of those people, including father, his mother, his sister, his brother, his uh, sister-in-law, are part of his constituency executive. No family member of mine is on my executive. So again, when in democracy things don't work out for some people, mm -hmm. then they want to criticize everything, similar to what is happening in the United States right mm -hmm. now, where the big lie mm -hmm. is being promoted in order to take away voters' rights and suppress well, the let's, vote, let's because interject. it didn't work out for, the, for one answer. side, right? right? right. But in democracy, everyone can't always get their way. But they're not there so, yet, so it is the majority that should get their way. And what I'm saying is, Mr. Saldiva resigned. And he did not send in any formal letter. He resigned. Mr. Faber resigned, effective January 31st. Mm -hmm. That is said and done. The central executive has no authority to write him and ask him to stay. If they but want isn't to, that how it was done the last time? No. The it, central executive no, decides on the no, date for the convention? No, 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 sir. The central executive is merely a recommending body. The MPC, the National okay. Party Council, mm -hmm. is the determining body of the United Democratic Party. Which is Party. the highest body? Yes. But, but Outside of the national convention, mm -hmm. which 
are, which is comprised of the delegates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the final authority, and that is when we have these conventions. But that caller is merely toting the Farber line again. So if the majority of central executive members, which is made up of no, mm -hmm. who have been uh, saying a lot no, all of a sudden, they never had a voice, but now they have a voice to endorse mm -hmm. their candidate and talk about a, a serious matter that shouldn't be trivialized or politicized. They sit on the central executive. Mm -hmm. um, Honorable Pantan sits on the central executive. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that she and them voted for Mr. You're not, Farber. You're not on the central executive. No, 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 Mr. Fa Mr. Mr. Farber to return oh. after he has resigned, for what? What we should be doing is moving forward and setting the date. And the central executive should recommend to the National Party Council, which I do sit on, which the 31 uh, constituency leaders and their chairs and secretaries sits on, they should be, we should be deciding what the date of the convention so there will be. There was a date being put out there as March 27th. That is a recommendation. Okay. The leadership core met, which is the elected mm -hmm. leaders of the party, mm -hmm. the, the deputy leader, the, um, the second deputy leader, the chair, and the vice chair. Okay. Uh, so that's where uh, that date came uh, from? Uh, on, a three to, on a three to one vote, right? Again, they take that to the central executive. They uh, deliberate that, mm -hmm. and they come up with a recommendation to then take to the National Party Council that will make up the agenda. And those motions will be presented and decided on. So regardless of what Mr. Castillo says, um, it is absolutely absurd that after protesting publicly, after making condemnations, and after demanding uh, the Honorable Farber's resignation, there would be this reverse course rather than moving forward, if that is in fact so. That is not what I heard. Okay. I heard that there, there was a meeting and um, there were members who uh, demanded that we move forward uh -huh. and that uh, uh, Honorable Farber, notwithstanding not submitting a physical resignation, resignation letter, uh -huh. has constructively resigned. So, so, so you're, you're confirming that no formal resignation letter was submitted to the No, but the, I am telling you, I am telling you that that was the case for Mr. Saldiva, and he constructively resigned. Okay. Why must there be a different standard mm -hmm. for Mr. Farber? Why must there be a attempt to usurp mm -hmm. democracy? So it is for the, the, it is for the, the, council, the, the, the council have the authority to, to, to ask him absolutely to Absolutely not. To, to, to stay absolutely not. That would need to go to the National Party Council as to whether or not they would even want to go down that road. Which, again, what are we doing? Why is it that the UDP always finds itself hostage? to one person. It is the same thing that happened in the February 9th convention in which Mr. Saldiva blew out Patrick Farber because that was the fact of the matter. The majority of colleagues and their delegates, because mm -hmm. they, they, there seems to be an attempt to divide the constituency leaders with their delegates, the delegates spoke loudly. The second convention, after all that had happened with Mr. Saldiva. If it were not for defections of people like me and others who crossed over to Mr. Farber to give him the benefit of the doubt, to say, all right, you want this thing so bad, right? You, we are hold up the whole party because you feel you're entitled to be leader. You know what? I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. I'm give you this opportunity. Make we go fight the, the People's United Party together and I will try with you. That is what I did. I am of the position, he failed. I was disappointed and I have been calling for new leadership um, since 
those failures took place last year. And he got another chance last year. And now here we are again. Remember, the central executive is comprised of FABA appointees. These aren't uh, people who were elected with the exception of the deputy leaders, the chair, and vice chair. I'll give you an example. Regional leaders are supposed to be elected by the standard bearers from that region, the executive committees from that region. They like to talk about the Constitution. I could tell you, Ms. Pantan herself did not get elected. She was appointed to be a regional leader. Mr. Aragon, appointed by who? Mr. Faber, to be a regional leader. So you're saying the central executive is stuck? Stuck with, 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 with Faber rights. So, and you're saying that the rules won't follow? I didn't how, say that the rules, well, the rules won't follow with some of them. Yes, of course, with, with some of them. Yeah. Some of them, yes, you can appoint. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the people that I highlighted as far as regional leaders mm -hmm. are supposed to be elected by the standard bearer. So, again, the constitution of the UDP and the rules of the UDP are convenient. Mm -hmm. And when comfortable, they use them. But right now, some of those people shouldn't even be on the central executive if we were following the Constitution mm -hmm. and following the rules. But notwithstanding, whatever the majority have recommended in the central executive, that still needs to go to the National Party Council, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is the ultimate authority in the party at this point, barring a national convention. And again, we have to ask ourselves, you know, people always talk about how much they love the party. You love the party or you love Patrick Faber? What is this really about? Michael Perfit has been in the UDP as long as Faber. He fight, he war, he protest, get arrested, mm -hmm. defend our people, has done all of that. So Michael Perfit isn't qualified to be interim party leader and manage the party until we go to a convention and allow the delegates to decide. Whatever the delegates, again, the difference between me and some in the UDP, when the majority of my colleagues, the same caucus for change, which now some want to say, oh, well, um, one group of people mm -hmm. can't decide what the party want. That is democracy. If a, if a group of the people make up the majority of standard bearers and constituency leaders and they want to go a certain direction that is democracy if you don't like it find a way to convince those people to go your way so you understand so, so, so but, but i'm just making the point mm -hmm. this is not about being loquacious mm -hmm. and being verbose this is about actions mm -hmm. when the caucus decided to forge a pact with Honorable Faber, for the sake of the party, for the sake of the unity, for the sake of preventing all that is happening right now, all over again. I accepted that. I didn't come on this show and protest. I don't make nobody call and run down the party and talk all with business. I took a principle approach that I would not discuss internal politics. I sent out a letter and bid everyone farewell and said the majority have spoken and let us proceed. That is democracy. Every time the Faber faction do not get their way, remember when we had a MPC, they had a hundred people outside protesting for him to, 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 to be leader. This is a pattern as other disturbing patterns. Whenever they don't get their way, they apply that Trumpanian, uh, the big lie, and all types of propaganda, and they insist and they persist. But in the eyes of the public, obviously, this is not looking good. It's not, it's looking, not good. looking good. So, 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 again, what would look good? Uh, again, it's confusing Mr. Faber, 
has constructively resigned. He did not attend the meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. So he, he, if he were the party leader or he wanted to but, but rescind... Were you, were you there, sir? No. Okay. I, 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 I spoke um, to, to members of the central executive. Okay. Um, he did not attend the meeting. Okay. I would have still been disappointed, but not surprised, if he attended the meeting and rescinded his resignation as saying no way, no way. But it is typical behavior that we are going to play these Machiavellian games and oh, um, the central executive, they asked me to come back, so I have to come back. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Those same members called for his resignation. Everyone agreed that he had to resign. But now that the candidate that they think that small minority of unelected uh, party officials mm -hmm. and unelected members of the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Nobody vote for them. Mm -hmm. They get appointed there by Faber. So the same way they like to talk about how a small group of people who control the party, how can unelected, not just in the House, but in the party mm -hmm. that were appointed by Mr. Faber, now take the party through this embarrassing circus when all we need to do is have the convention and let the people decide. But they know, are aware that the odds are stacked against their candidate of choice. But that is democracy. Mm -hmm. Question, uh, if you, when you have the convention, can Mr. Faber then decide I will run again in this no, convention? No, no, no. Because he has resigned, he is disqualified from running yes. in the convention? You can't change your mind in no kind of way, fashion or form? No. It, the, the same applied. That was the precedent for, for, um, for Mr. Saldiva. But he ran again a second time, Where, where he, he resigned. He, he did run again, yes, and, and, and there were those in cabinet After he who threatened to resign from parliament. But had, can Mr. Had, Faber do what Mr. Saldiva did? He, he should yeah. not. And I, I well, don't... That, that's the question. But There's he nothing that precludes him. I, 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 the, the MPC, the the MPC can answer. preclude him. Oh. Why the MPC allowed it to happen the first time should, should not have happened. But again, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. kind of puppet yeah. show uh, abstract the opposition is turning into? Well, we have to get into the serious questioning as we have been doing. Yes, because the uh, no, Honorable I know, Shine Bar will be here with us until the 30, so we yes, have to yes, get everything in as much as we can. Yes, yes initially, <laughs> initially we, 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 we wanted to go a different direction, Appreciate but basically the, the meeting was last night, and because that, that those are new information, um, you know, so basically uh, um, that came out. I, 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 want, I wonder how John Castillo got all that information. Well, obviously he did because he, he, he explained it to himself and he said he's very close to the, to the party and that sort of thing, but... Let's, let's look at where we are right now in terms of the possibility, because it sounds that way that there's going to be a convention. What that date is going to be, obviously, is going to be confirmed by the National Party Council for the UDP. But in terms of where candidates are right now, it's just you and the Honorable Tracy Panton that has indicated that you are going to vie for the position of leadership um, since Faber has for all intent and purposes, based on what you said, constructively resigned based on that, that video post that he put out, the, which was the 31st of January. What sets you apart? Why shine borrow over Tracy Pantan? Because I am uh, decisive. I am fearless. I have stability. I'm not wishy-washy. I uh, don't cower in the face of inconvenience and discomfort, and to lead a mass party, and to lead a country, you have to have broad shoulders. You cannot be a leader of convenience. There is no such thing. Uh, and at this juncture, to have any possibility of defeating the PUP in these village councils that are coming up, in the municipal elections that will be held in 2024 and the general elections that could be held at any time. We need a leader that is focused and a leader that is reliable. We don't need a leader that is looking for comfort and looking 
for ease. We need a leader that will deal with the difficulties and the hardships of rebuilding and reforming a party. A How mass you party. Doing that, then, One of the first things, I I'll tell you, as leader of the opposition, you know, for six months from November until I became leader of the opposition, we didn't even have a finance person on the shadow cabinet. We didn't even have a shadow minister of health in the shadow cabinet. And those are the two most vital components that our country is struggling right now. Within weeks of becoming the leader of the opposition, I got finance people, uh, former uh, executives at the IDB, former um, governor of the Central Bank. Um, I got uh, a health, a shadow health, two um, long-standing medical professionals to come in to the cabinet. That is the type of leadership that I present. Mm -hmm. I am decisive. I am no. I am swift. Not haste, but swift. And I am about action, as uncomfortable as it may be, as challenging as it may be, and people can rely on me. When I say I will be there, that is what it is. If I can't, I will tell you no. Our party cannot afford to take a risk with unreliability, with cowardice, with people who will shy away from the gargantuan challenges that presents itself mm -hmm. when you are on the opposition benches. Technically, technically where, where we are right now is that far, the Honorable Faber has found himself in a debacle as it relates to um, domestic abuse situation. Every so often when they interview the Honorable Tracy Panton, she tries she to allude to, to the fact that you had, a, you you had a situation mm -hmm. as well, and therefore um, that, that should be considered as well. Is it, is it hypocritical on your part or hypocritical on her part to be, able to be bringing that up or you to be, be downplaying that situation as well? You know, um, I said on Love FM, I was, I was interviewed by your journalists, said on other media stations in regards to that issue, my contrition and my remorse for even being involved in an allegation that has not been proven, but to not debate facts and not get into right and wrong, my position was to just accept accountability and blame for whatever I did in that, as the Honorable Faber calls it, misunderstanding. However, to have another misunderstanding and another allegation and another allegation and another allegation establishes a disturbing pattern. So there is no comparison between an isolated incident and a pattern. We're talking five different incidents with three different accusers. And so the question that the delegates have to ask themselves is where was Tracy Pantan when 53% of the delegates voted to recall Mr. Farber? Where was she? She was by Mr. Farber's side. When I condemned the acts and said that we need to move forward and we want Tracy Pantan to lead us forward, she disassociated herself from me. And she said that the party leader who at this period had been, had had three different incidents with two different women, and this was the video proof of the violent behavior that had been alleged, 
She said he still have for she confidence. So no shine who has an isolated incident. I, I, I don't deserve one chance when she was prepared to give him three chances. And no, you have two incidents that happened in one week with the last allegations because there was a report made on Monday for, for no court action, then a subsequent one on Wednesday when something else happened. And she still didn't come out. The National Organization of Women still didn't come out and condemn and demand a resignation. So hypocrisy would lie at the feet of Ms. Pantan. I believe me speaking out against gender-based violence is what I should do. It is my responsibility to demonstrate to this nation that I have learned from my interaction, albeit an allegation that is unproven. Just to have that type of experience has made me hypersensitive and sympathetic to the plight of women. And I stood up exposing myself to the criticism of being a hypocrite. I was fine with that because I can sleep at night knowing that I was true to my principles. How does Miss Pantan sleep knowing that she betrayed her principles if it is that she feels so strongly about GVB and about women's rights? Where were you? Where were you last year? All of this could have been avoided. We would not be here right now. We would be here with her as the leader of the opposition and party leader, rebuilding our party and talking about this Friday's house meeting. And my question to ministers, mm -hmm. inquiring about the alleged corruption in the Ministry of Environment, mm -hmm. where um, uh, people who want to do developments and get their clearance are being uh, you know, solicited for bribes. That's what we need to talk about. Right? We need to talk about where we are with, with new growth industries. Uh, we, we passed a bill in the House to start a new industry with the Misuse of Drugs Act. Where are we with that? Because well, we I want to see... Is that good for the I, I, I want to see... Sure. I want mm -hmm. to see job... I, 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 where are we with that? That is what I am focused on. With all this happening, I submit my question to ministers. Of all the opposition members, I think, in the history of opposition, I have submitted the most question for ministers. I, I, I am doing my work. Every house meeting, I get up and I speak on behalf of the Belizean people. And that is where I would like the focus uh, it, to be. My, my question to the Minister of, of, of Labor, mm -hmm. what are they doing to get the 120,000 people that have been unemployed due to COVID-19 state of emergency. What are they doing to get those people back to work? Where are the new jobs that the PUP manifesto promised? Right? No quarrel, no personal attacks. I just want to know. Brief the Honorable House on where we are because that is what matters. And what is happening in the UDP is a distraction from what should happen. Which, and that's what it boils down to, you know. Which brings us to this point, yeah, Shine, because yeah. it's important, because we always know that the internal party rumbling is even more corrosive than when you're dealing with your, the opposition, the opposition or, yeah. or the other party or, or your opponent. And that seemed to sting and stay very long. What, what would be your plan going forward? Because obviously there's going to be these factions yeah. because of, of the, the whole personal attacks that generally Joy, come as a result. Let, let me tell you who I am. And people truly need to understand me. I have been honorable my entire life. I have had integrity my entire life. My career was destroyed and my life irreparably damaged because I stood up for what was right and I had the character to not get my friends in trouble because I found myself in trouble. That is who I am. But the problem we have here is you have people that want you to be 
a blind follower. They want you to be a fanatic. They don't understand that in a democracy, I could disagree with you. Of course. And I could feel another way. And it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that I have a personal issue with you. I agree. And again, to demonstrate my integrity, I will tell you, I text the Honorable Patrick Farber after this tragic incident. And I told him that I am praying for him, that I wish him and Dr. Arnold well, and that I will value his contributions to the party moving forward. That is who Shineboro is. I have no ax to grind, but right is right. And it is not just hypocritical of Ms. Pantan, but the hypocrisy of all of those who would dare, if it did indeed happen, write a letter to ask Mr. Farber to return, but at the same time they want to condemn me because of an isolated incident. What world are we living in? This is like the twilight zone. And under the circumstances, it, it's absurd. Yeah. Are, are you taking maybe a little advice from your father? Your father, yeah. I was about to ask that question. How influential uh, yeah, is your father in all of this in the Shine Barrow we are seeing today? Son, yeah. Father to son kind father, of. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't uh, equate it as father to son. He's the former prime minister mm -hmm. of this country. Yes. Uh, you know, party leader for 20 years. So in I, I that would context, be, I, I would be a fool uh, not to... Um, solicit advice and to welcome ad advice, you know, but yeah. I get advice from many of the senior members of the party, not just the, the former yeah, your uncle, Prime Minister. Uh, honorable, uh, former Michael Finnegan has been a very Finnegan successful Joe politician. Yes, yes, yes. He's not, he's a bit under the weather right now, so I have not been troubling him with um, party matters. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I am, again, you say, why me? I am a different type of leader. This will not be the leadership of the last 40 years from both political parties. I am an equal amongst leaders. I will lead shoulder to shoulder. Nobody behind me. Shoulder to shoulder, let us go. And you know, I had a meeting with one of the constituencies yesterday, and I ended with the request to allow me to serve you as your leader, serve you, right? This is not about uh, being dogmatic and autocratic and this entitlement and this obsession that I should be the one and the way it was done 40 years ago in the institutions where the party leaders and prime ministers had this absolute power. Those days are done. This is a democracy, and the leaders that will prevail will be the leaders that inspire people to follow them. Mm -hmm. You can't force anyone to follow you, and that is why we are in the position we are in, mm -hmm. because there is a faction in the UDP that wants to force all of us to go their way. Now they want to complain about a delegate list, and well, if, the, if we're not change the delegate list, then the results we are get won't be somebody we are not want. Oh, but uh, Ms. Pantan was lobbying the caucus for change. Mm -hmm. Not lobbying to change the delegate list and make the delegates decide. Mm -hmm. And now that the caucus for change has endorsed me, now they realize that it is an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. The numbers are not in her favor remotely, it won't be close. Mm -hmm. But again, that is democracy. Again, let the delegates decide. Don't pull the Trumpanian big lie and to try to say that, you know, the vote was compromised and, and, and it, it is illegitimate. Okay. Stop. Yeah. What's your position with regards to UNCAC, the implementation of UNCAC? My position is, as it has corruption. always been, that we must, um, we must have a transformational change, uh, a cultural change, and hold everyone accountable. And so UNCAC should be implemented. I appreciated what the Attorney General uh, had opined in that they wanted to implement 
um, legislation that was consistent with UNCAC rather than uh, compromise our sovereignty in having an external agency police us, mm -hmm. if you will. I can accept that mm -hmm. because that becomes very um, dangerous mm -hmm. when you have external forces, you know, um, uh, managing your internal ma affairs. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do agree with us then taking it upon ourselves to implement the legislation that would be consistent with UNCAC, appointing a Belizean who could manage that process, who is objective, and who will operate without favor, fear, or ill will towards anyone. We so, can do that. So that would have to be more like a constitutional position where the person is untouchable. That is, that is why we were complaining profusely about the attempt to politicize mm -hmm. the, some of the constitutional bodies mm -hmm. um, that are enshrined. Mm -hmm. When they were trying to say, well, your term were up when the, when the political party's term is up in parliament. Mm -hmm. We were saying no. Make we expand the term so that people that are placed there have tenure and they don't have to uh, operate arbitrarily at the whims of the political party of the day. Mm -hmm. and, and that is another reason why I should be leader of the UDP. Because this is not about me and I have demonstrated that again when the Caucus for Change endorsed the Honorable Patrick Farber. I accepted that. I never badmouthed none of my colleagues. I never got up on TV and run down nobody. I submitted my letter and said thank you for those who had confidence in me. The majority has spoken and I remain quiet. Mm -hmm. I tried to stay in the shadow cabinet and support as I could. I went abroad and promoted and marketed Belize and continued to engage with my congressional friends and, and senators and governors and do all types of things for culture and arts and, and economy and tourism. And I focused on what I could do. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to be a distraction mm -hmm. to the party because yeah. the party is bigger than me. Yeah. Yeah, but so we don't need another leader who will be a puppet, who will be controlled by a faction that with the behavior that we are seeing. They don't care about the institution. Mm -hmm. The institution needs to be strengthened mm -hmm. and the institution needs to be bigger than any one leader or aspiring leader, we need to create an institution, when you talk about UNCAC, that will hold everyone accountable, mm -hmm. that will hold all of us to the highest standards, and no one will be able to manipulate that because they have their appointees, and in the face of what is obvious, their appointees will come and try to sell something else to the party and to the Belizean Let, let's, people. Let's quick, very quickly, uh, yeah, before the break, or, or you could yeah. answer the question, but I'll just frame it before and then we could respond well, after. Maybe we could answer quickly, but, yeah. but let's in, just in, run the break. In politics, especially in this day and age, you need money to run the party, to run election, to run convention. Are you, are you in a better position maybe than, than the Honorable Tracy Panton to be able to do that for the, for the party? Would you be able to, to kind of expand a little bit in terms of how that would come about to be able to have the resources to be able to mount a fair challenge against the, the, the sit sitting government? Well, uh, certainly finances um, are essential to the operation of any mass party and to the victory in the general elections. And I think everyone will accept that I'm in a far better position uh, to finance the party and to finance a general elections, a village council, uh, municipals, uh, than my opponent. Okay. What's the driving force inside of you that led you to want to become the leader of this, of this party? The, what, 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 when did you realize that that is a dream and the goal you wanted to, to achieve? Chief, and what drove you to Chief, or what drives Chief, you? Chief, unlike my predecessor who had a dream of being prime minister, that is not my dream. My dream is to transform this country. My dream is, as I told some delegates last night, is for systematic 
transformation where it doesn't matter whether it's PUP or UDP, every Belizean can get an affordable house. Not a free house, but an affordable house. Something as simple as that. You have people paying $100 a week for a room. Mm -hmm. Why can't we make it where those same people paying that $400 could pay $400 a month on a mortgage and own a home? Mm -hmm. But our leaders have not been thinking like that because poverty, being illiterate, and dependent makes for a better voter in their eyes. Whereas with me, I want to empower and uplift our people because that will raise the GDP, that will make Belize better for everyone. Mm -hmm. the, the business people down to the laborers, mm -hmm. right? So for me, there is no dream for me to be leader and for me to be prime minister. There is a dream for me to change this country and have a long-lasting transformation for this country that will benefit everybody, not just UDPs, not PUPs, but every Belizean access to education. Something as simple as a student loan um, uh, format. Right now, you're a poor Southside young lady and you want to go to school because you need a degree to get a decent job. You graduate high school. Your parents can't afford for you to go to Sixth Farm. The least stipend what government might give you is not enough. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You go to DFC. They will tell you you have to pay that loan right now, every month. Where will you get the money from? Where will your parents get the money from if they're unemployed? You're unemployed. And then if you're going to school, how are you going to work at a call center where you have to work all hours and then you can't focus on your studies? So something as simple as compelling uh, the DFC, the National Bank, and, and, and appealing to the commercial banks to create a um, student loan scheme similar to the United States where you don't have to pay for your student loan until you have gotten your degree and gotten a job and then they will deduct from your salary to pay back your loan which could take however many years. Nonetheless, you will have equipped yourself with what you need to go into the workforce and to contribute to a better Belize. Yeah. Right now, we don't have that. Yeah. I know right now there's talk of constitutional reforms um, in looking at how we are governed and, and, and what have you. Personally, sometimes I like to push the button to the point where I would say that even we have to look at the ministerial system and the curving the power of ministers, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing, putting more power in the, in, in the House of Representatives uh, versus having ministers trumping the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what is your take on all, all of you, this? You know, um, you know, I recently graduated from McGill University in parliamentary studies. And one of, one of the first uh, lectures that I had, they were talking about you know, the different parliaments around the world and, and how to combat corruption mm -hmm. and you know, um, the different fixes, whether it is what you have suggested uh, or other alternatives. And my position was, it doesn't matter what system you put in place, if the people in the system lack integrity and lack the fortitude to do what is right. Mm -hmm. Because if you go the way that you're talking, you're just creating more people that uh, will just be possibly engaged in more corruption, right? It is not a not absolute fix. Mm -hmm. not an absolute First, thing. we have to do what you and I have always talked about. And um, uh, the, your friend from BNE, mm -hmm. revolution of the mind. That is so. The first thing we need to do in this country is change the mindset of our people. I agree and with then that. the systems that we put in place have the greater chance I'm of happy to working hear you that the way <laughs> that it's supposed to <laughs> work. Because yeah. putting <laughs> lipstick on a pig, it will still be a pig. A pig. You yeah. put a band-aid on a bullet hole without stitching it and treating it, you will bleed out. Yeah. And that is where we are in the country. We need to change oh, the mindset. mindset of our young people. And that is what I represent. I represent the youth as well. 
I represent the indomitable spirit of the youth that they can do anything. Southside, Pachacan, Chonush, Barranco. Mm -hmm. You can be anything. We need to come out of this mindset, this draconian mindset that, you know, you have to be there for 30 years as a technocrat to lead this country. Every youth should wake up and think they could be prime minister. Exactly. And if, well, if I'm not prime minister, I could contribute to this country in a meaningful way. We have to give our people hope. We have to change the mindset. So before we get into uh, the, the composition, whether it's a republic, whether that, you vote the directly the for prime minister, mm. let us work on changing the mindsets mm -hmm. of our people. And that is why I'm so focused on institution stability, institutional stability. We have to stop focusing on on individuals and what is good for me, mm -hmm. what is my self-interest, because that is why the country has not developed for the past 40 years. Because when it's time to vote, people don't vote based on integrity. People vote based on dependency, desperation, and self-interest. And so we have to change the mindset. And it's the present system that does not lead to that change of the mindset so what i'm saying or is allows the change of the mindset to take place yes but yeah. if you, you know? if you if you do a radical change and of the so system there is no guarantee so you look at it there yeah. is no guarantee uh -huh. that the mindset will change so what i'm saying i've the, just the mindset pointed is out most important the, uh, what uh, i've just pointed out that. will help with that mindset mm -hmm. i was vice chairman in mesopotamia for years before i became standard bearer and elected representative and what i used to do is have the, the CEO of BNE, um, professors from Columbia University, come into Mesopotamia and inspire my youths and even the older people that they could be a professor, they could be a CEO of a big corporation right from the south side. Mm -hmm. And this is how you go about it. Self-reliance, independence, right? accountability instead of just giving people a hands out I have been trying to give my people a mental hand up so that they don't need me I want the system to be able to work for everyone I don't believe in the ministerial um, uh, garganism the, the, the ministerial demigod mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. right you you the people in Mesopotamia, hello to my wonderful Mesopotamia people and all the people across this country. You elect us to go and legislate mm -hmm. and create a system that will work for you. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm this, saying. Sir. The way this is <laughs> where I have to, you have to come to me, go to the minister, go to the area representative. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be like that. And that is why I want to lead this country because those people who have been there for 30 years, they're entrenched in that mindset. Mm -hmm. But, no, but the youth like me, as it always is, it's always the young people who have a different mindset and see Belize for all her potential and have the genius and the innovation to take what was great from my predecessors and apply the vision that we have now to move forward. We have to grow. We have to evolve. But, but, but let's put it and in that is why I now. want to be leader of this party, and that is and why we, we, I want to be which, which the next my, prime minister of this is, country. My next question is in line mm. with that, because you're, obviously, from, for the most part, there will be a convention, and once that convention comes about, there's, it's two candidates. One candidate, like yourself, is saying, I want to revolutionize things. Obviously, the other candidate might be considered more institutional. Where are we... I, as far as your concern is, is concerned, as it relates to the rest of the, the delegates and the persons that are out there, because generally when you look at the, the, the delegates and its composition, are, those are the entrenched persons, the institutional type thinking persons who have been there for a long, for a long time, who are stalwarts of the party, but who used to the old system. How are you going to overcome that? And understandably that you said you have endorsement from the majority of division, but we've saw that before. We saw where the, the, the leaders of the, 
of the caucuses tend you, to you, say, you I support you, you, you didn't but see the that, delegates... You didn't see that in, in 2020. It was okay. a blowout. In, in 2020? It was a blowout. Yes. And after all that Mr. Saldiva went through, he still was about to beat uh, Mr. Farber. Because we always had a statement. Ha ha it's had, about had, the had, had, had others like myself yeah. not defected. Had we stayed on board, Farber would have lost again. So, again, um, but to answer your question, the people, the delegates mm -hmm. in the July 2021 recall voted for a revolution. They voted for reform because that's what the recall was about that we want to change the system. We don't want nobody. You know, yesterday in one of my meetings, um, someone said, well, all right, we will vote for you to be party leader, but then they have a convention again in, a, in a two years. And I said, that is democracy. Mm -hmm. No one has a, a, a title, a stronghold on democracy. Democracy is fluid. The will of the people. Right? So what I am supposed to do for the next two years is work to gain your trust and your confidence, is to inspire you to have conviction in my leadership where it will be clear to everyone in the party that by the shine borough. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do that, then yes, examine me. And if there's someone more suitable, give that person a chance. Mm -hmm. the right? So the, the, the delegates have proven, 53% of them have proven that they are ready for revolution. They are ready for reform of this party and an overhaul of this party. And many of the people for Caucus for Change mm -hmm. are of a like mind. They want to, 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 to have institutional changes to make um, leadership more accessible to everyone. Yeah. Quick house matter. Um, one, one, one of the, the possible items on the agenda for the House would be the defamatory the defamation act that is going to possibly be read a mm -hmm. um, first time. Well, any, any, any overarching views on that? Any, any, any concerns about it? Or, or are you in support of it? What would be well, well, uh, you know, party we position? We have our parliamentary caucus uh, tomorrow. Um, so we have not deliberated the matter, which, which again, which is why we need to, instead of anybody proposing writing a letter to ask anyone to return, we need to move forward because we have a house meeting to attend to. We have national issues to attend to. So we need to get on with the business of the people. But mm -hmm. to answer that question, freedom of speech, comes with responsibility. Mm -hmm. I am of that firm belief. And social media has become a desert, a wild west to say whatever you want to say in the comment sections and on your page with mm -hmm. no repercussion. And I believe that we must be guided. We're a nation of law and order and people should not be allowed to pervert the freedom of speech to defame mm -hmm. and slander other people you have to be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth so i am inclined to support uh, a legislation that makes sense okay. that does not overreach and try to deprive the Belizeans of their constitutional right to freedom of speech. But I am inclined to implement legislation that safeguards against the perversion of freedom of speech. You cannot uh, take advantage of that right. Mm -hmm. well, uh, in well, yeah, go ahead, well you, you want to something? No, I was going to say it's already 28 minutes past 8 o'clock and we have to think about winding. Yes, uh, yes, I was, I was just about to, to, to get there, more, more like a, a final um, question. Yes. Uh, if, yeah. you, if you're an elected leader of the United Democratic Party, will you con continue the shadow ministry 
um, um, concept and, and hold your shadow ministers to much higher standard to, in terms of checkmating whichever ministry that they are shadowing. Um, we saw recently a resignation from the shadow ministry, uh, uh, Stephen Duncan. Yeah. Um, um, I didn't know he was a part of it, quite honestly, but yeah. when we saw uh, the, the information out there, is, there, is this a tradition that you, you want to well, put yes, more teeth into it? This is a tradition from the days of uh, uh, Right Honorable George Price and, and Honorable mm -hmm. Philip Golson. Um, so uh, the shadow ministry is a Westminster parliamentary system, like literally in the UK and other uh, Westminster systems, there is a budget for shadow ministers and um, because they, they want a strong uh, opposition. So it is something that, as leader of the opposition, I will continue to engage with the prime minister about in how we can strengthen the opposition. Uh, we, we need a legal council so that we can draft legislation and present it to the House. We need an opposition day mm -hmm. so that we can bring opposition business um, in the House. So the shadow ministry is, is still... In effect, I, I am now the chair because I was sworn in as leader of the opposition yesterday. Mm -hmm. So immediately I reconstituted my uh, shadow cabinet. And again, the difference with me, some of your journalist friends used to, um, you know, clung me and say, you know, I put out a million press releases when I was uh, uh, leader of the opposition. But the way I did it is what you just said. I held all of my shadow ministers accountable and to the highest standard. There is no need for you to be in the shadow ministry if you are not going to be out there on top of every issue because the Belizean people need a voice. That is the hallmark of democracy. The government has the majority. They will have their position, but not everybody will agree with that. Even the people that voted for them may not agree with that. Mm -hmm. And we as the opposition have to always be alert mm -hmm. and always have a voice and reflect the voice of the masses. So shadow ministry is very important and I hold my shadow ministers to the highest standards. But unlike past leaders, I don't want the shadow ministry, uh, the, the shadow cabinet, I'm sorry, uh, to be some type of prop for me. I want my shadow ministers to shine to go out and be the voices and the leaders that they are. So my vision for Shadow Cabinet is to introduce the Shadow Cabinet, is to promote the Shadow Cabinet as individuals. You know, there was this policy that, well, well Shadow uh, Ministers would um, put out press releases to the party. I believe that the party is to deal with the constituencies, deal with internal party matters. And while we have some elected party members on the shadow cabinet, the shadow cabinet is to deal with the parliamentary, legislative, policy issues. No, we can coordinate. But I want to give my shadow ministers the power, the privilege to speak and to take ownership of the issues. You don't see a Prime Minister Brasenio at, you know, the Minister of Health's press conferences or the Minister of Police's press conferences. They are ministers and they represent their ministry. And I'm sure in cabinet, they coordinate and they talk. But at the end of the day, I want my shadow ministers to go out there and be the face of their ministry. Mm -hmm. And I want to promote them because I am not insecure. I don't feel that I have to suppress anyone to uplift myself. And so my vision for the shadow cabinet is very, very real. I believe, again, it is another component of a strong opposition. We are supposed to be studying those issues every day. And every time there is a problem, every time we see a deficiency, we are supposed to speak up and be that voice. It's 33 minutes past eight. Well, the time very quickly, I don't know, Mr. Barrow, in about a minute or so, give us a... Well, final, word. A final word. Well, I, I thank you to all of the delegates that have been in touch with me, uh, that I have reached out to, that have expressed uh, their willingness to support me. And I look forward to seeing all of you on the campaign trail. Uh, I love you, Mesopotamia. 
and I love uh, all of my UDP brothers and sisters. I hope that we can come together and unite and stop the distractions and let us stay focused on being a strong opposition and making ourselves a viable alternative to form the next government of Belize.